welcome. Good morning. It's Monday. Monday. It's the Monday motivation. First Monday of October. Wow. <laughs> October 3rd, and it's getting cold out. What's today's date? October 3rd. <laughs> Have you ever seen Mean Girls? No. Oh. If you know, you know. <laughs> I don't know, because I have never, unashamedly, can say I've never seen Mean Girls. Wow. I say it unashamedly. <laughs> I'm not ashamed. Well, it's October 3rd. It is, and chilly mornings. I love it. Rode my bike today. You did? Not too far. It's raining. I said, no, it's like, it's drying out. Oh. Yeah. It's been raining all weekend. We hope everybody is safe. If you have been in the central or the southeastern or northeastern parts of the network, we had the remnants of Hurricane Ian mm -hmm. coming through, and it rained Crazy. a lot, a yeah. whole lot. So hope everybody's doing well. Uh, Corinne, how was your weekend? Well, it started with Friday. We had a fun day in Gettysburg. Oh, yes. The team, yeah. we went to Gettysburg. Mm -hmm. PD does GB. Yep. Pink hats. If you know, and you know. It was really cool. Another if you know, you know. Another if you know, you know. Everybody. You can see it on our, my Instagram. It's on my Instagram. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, we went to Gettysburg and we did a Segway tour. Yeah. And it was awesome. Okay. I want to address some information that's been out there. Someone started an Instagram account. Yeah. A leaks <laughs> Called account? Pendel Youth Leaks. <laughs> And it's putting up tons of fake news fake, fake, about fake. DYD succession <laughs> and things that are going to happen at convention. Yeah. Which actually the one about Jake Kelly flying over the audience with glitter. I would love it if that happened. That would be cool. It's not happening no. though. Yeah. And uh, then on Pendel Youth Memes, there was stories over the weekend. I saw that. About, Weird um, as well. This, uh, this is the new DYD. My first act as your king is to <laughs> ban all New Jersey drivers. Yeah. And then it had footage of us on the segways. I know. Said we were hunting down existing Jersey drivers. I so wish we were doing that because people from New Jersey really are <laughs> terrible drivers. Every single one. All of them. But uh, sadly, that is not the case. Now, yeah, if you've been living news. here for a while, you came from New Jersey, you've been living here for a while, and you're offended, don't be offended. You've been in Pennsylvania long enough to shed your bad habits from New Jersey. Because <laughs> I am correct about that. Anyway, yeah. So Friday we had a good time. And yeah. we went to, uh, after the... After, if you don't know anything about that section of Pennsylvania, Gettysburg is uh, in Adams County. Adams County is the fruit uh, apple growing capital of the East and Coast. And I had no idea. So we drove up into Apple Orchard Country, mm -hmm. which sits Beautiful. between basically Carlisle and Gettysburg. And we f went to an orchard, and it turns out it was free hot free cider day. Cider day, and uh, oh. yeah, and hashtag, I raced Maria down a slide. Hashtag favor. Yeah. She cheated. <laughs> she so. did cheat. She did. <laughs> Yeah. So anyway, that was the start. Good time. To a last nice, nice team weekend. building activity. Yeah. This is my last Monday motivation as youth director. Crazy. Crazy. So you're saying if we ever wanted you on as a special guest, I would be amenable to that. Well. Yes. You heard it first year. Uh, however, if I was a new DYD, I'd try to put as much distance between <laughs> me and him or her as possible. So. Me? Anyway. You mean? No. Oh, you just pointed. Whoever the future DYD oh, okay, is. Okay. 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 Is it her? No. No. All right. Oh, wow. So, anyway. Anyway. Uh, we have uh, announcements. Youth convention is this week, starting it Saturday is this night. week. Yeah. It, we, are, we are incoming to youth convention. We sure we are. We are, I think at this point, about 17% greater attendance. Yes, 17%. He loves a percentage. Greater attendance. Uh, this year than last year, and there, we know that there are groups yet that, for whatever reason, have not yet put their registration in, <laughs> even though they've collected money and we know they're coming. <laughs> yes. So, uh, I want to put a link in the chat uh, here in the comments once again of the Kalahari uh, credit card um, authorization mm -hmm. form. This is if you're using a credit card that is a church credit card, you want to use it on rooms that the card holder is not staying in. Mm -hmm. We believe this is the solution to that challenge we encountered last year. So please pay attention to that. Um, and we'll try to, I think I want to post it on the main Pendel Youth page as Ooh, well. Okay. Uh, here's a letter of authorization for credit card use that may be handy for Kalahari. Yeah. And uh, you have to like copy the card and the ID of the card holder and send it to Kalahari in advance. So don't sit on this and mm -hmm. wait on this. Yeah. So 
convention starts Saturday night, but you can arrive as early as 11 a.m. Saturday to enjoy the water park, etc. You can't check into your rooms that early, but you could arrive as early as 11. So I don't know what you're planning on doing Saturday, but you might want to plan on that. Um, registration or check-in, I'm sorry, does uh, it's from 2 to 5. So 2 to 5 is registration. That is the time block, and we can't wait to see you during those hours right there absolutely and we will be there we're moving in on friday oh yeah and uh, we're excited so uh we want to just talk about uh we have some open churches again and i'll just continue to say these uh one has been filled which i'll announce shortly but evangel heights sarver is open for youth pastor harvest church in trucksville which is near wilkesbury open crossroad community church mechanicsburg looking for a youth pastor Central Assembly Houston, looking for a youth pastor. And congratulations and welcome back to Pendel Youth Pastors and Leaders, Jamin and Bethany Gardner, who have just accepted and was announced uh, over the weekend youth pastor role at Mount Morris Gospel Woo! Tabernacle in Mount Morris yeah, Mount with Morris. Joe Adams. Fantastic opportunity and really encouraged Jamin and Bethany to take a look at that, and I am thrilled that they've accepted. Awesome. Uh, I think it'll be a perfect, perfect fit. And so welcome back, Jamin and Bethany, when you see this. Uh, and uh, we're thrilled to have you back in the Pendo Ministry Network. Yeah. So exciting stuff. Um, late rate, currently for convention, $75. You can still mm -hmm. register. Add-on, Mascot Mania. We talked late about this. Late night game show experience. Yeah, late, late night game show experience. It's mm -hmm. going to be wild. <laughs> Come dressed up. Uh, you can add that to your registration at any time or at the door. Mm -hmm. And, of course, uh, the fall give yes. is happening. And I just have seen groups working hard, yeah. raising money. Congrats awesome to uh, Enola, Rivulet, Anthony Pallotta said that their group with no fundraising, mm -hmm. just students giving, gave over $5,000 in a two-month period yep. just from giving, not from fundraising. It's awesome. That's powerful. I yeah. think that it's type of – yeah, It's a small yeah. That type of giving, I think, is more formational than mm -hmm. any fundraiser ever could be. Yeah. And then a fundraiser, you're really working to get other people to give mm -hmm. or buy something. Yeah. But when you personally give, uh, as David said, I will not offer to the Lord burnt offerings that cost me nothing. Mm. And sometimes that's what fundraising is like. You are, are giving an offering, but you didn't really – it's not right, your money, right. you know. So when you personally give it, it's powerful. Fundraising is good too, especially for students that don't have jobs and, mm -hmm. and want to do other stuff. Oh, yeah. But, hey, we're going to continue on our the, discussion of yeah. longevity in youth ministry. Uh, this is our final session. And, uh, and today I want to hit on two Assemblies of God distinctives, the Holy Spirit and the call to ministry, mm -hmm. and talk a little bit about those. Uh, we uh, surveyed 79 full-time Assemblies of God youth pastors who've been in their church for five years or more. The least amount of time a person was in a church was five years. The most was over 25 years in the same church as a vocational youth awesome. pastor. Yeah. Just an amazing amount of experience that went into this survey. I interviewed then 24 of those 79. And um, today we're going to talk about the spiritual characteristics that contribute to longevity and things that are significant. I want to hit on these, and then I want to revisit. We're going to revisit and talk about things that were unique, are unique to Assemblies of God youth pastors. Okay. Because this is powerful. This is research that has never been done before uh, on Assemblies of God youth wow. pastors, the distinctives that we'll revisit. And I think it's just so critical to understand for your youth ministry success. So yeah. uh, awesome. spiritual significance. And we've talked about this a little bit in terms of our vision as Pendel Youth, what we emphasize at events. Yeah. There are general shared evangelical or Christian or faith values across all, I think, denominations, fellowships, churches, such as reading the Bible, mm -hmm. personal devotion time, prayer. And then there are things that are distinctive to our Pentecostal experience the impact of the Holy Spirit on our ministry, mm -hmm. the active witness of the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, the call, uh, even the call to ministry, we perceive that slightly differently in the Assemblies of God mm -hmm. than others do, and we put a lot of weight on it. Yes. A lot of weight in the call. So here's some of the top spiritual characteristics that youth pastors that have been in the, their church five years or longer uh, achieve. Number one, the youth pastor spends time in God's presence on a regular basis. 
This is the top one. And notice it's not measured in personal daily devotional time mm -hmm. or worship or reading the Bible. You just spend time in God's presence. We know there's a number of ways to do that. Mm -hmm. This is the highest scoring factor of commonality. So don't neglect your relationship with the Lord. Number two, youth pastor understands that his or her spiritual health has a direct impact on his or her effectiveness as a youth pastor. Yeah, big. This is big. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, average score, this was actually a tied uh, with that top one, 4.8. Each of them scored a 4.8. Uh, so number three, youth pastor practices some spiritual disciplines several times each year or more. Things like fasting, uh, meditating on the word, mm. uh, things like that. Uh, number four, the Holy Spirit plays a major role in the youth pastor's ability to achieve youth ministry longevity. And these ones on the Holy Spirit, these have never been measured before in uh, on a youth pastor's wow. effectiveness, life longevity. Um, all the existing studies on youth ministry longevity aren't specific yeah. to a spirit-empowered context. So they don't measure it. It's not, sig it's not significant enough to them to even measure it. Wow. But we measure it. We do. Big time. Yeah. So when we say you've heard it first here. You have you heard, heard it, it first. First. Here. Here. The empowerment of the Holy Spirit, number five, has helped the youth pastor do things in youth ministry he or she was not otherwise capable of doing. Hmm. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Youth pastor spends, in number six, this is one that would have commonality amongst all uh, churches. Youth pastor regularly spends personal time reading the Bible. Number seven, the youth pastor's calling has sustained him or her in youth ministry, especially mm -hmm. during challenging times and seasons. Yeah. Number eight, very common again, youth pastor prays regularly as part of his or her devotional practice. Number nine, when the youth pastor becomes frustrated in ministry, we all know this happens, mm -hmm. he or she <laughs> takes it to the Lord in prayer. Uh, number 10, participation in the life of the church plays a major role in the spiritual health of the youth pastor. I think that's really important. Yeah. I think that's a big one. Uh, number 11, the youth pastor operates in one or more of the spiritual gifts regularly. Spiritual gifts, 1 Corinthians 12. Mm -hmm. So these are the ones that are, uh, a lot of people will call all the gifts in the New Testament spiritual gifts. The 1 Corinthians 12 gift list is specifically imparted by the Holy Spirit as the Holy Spirit will. Things mm -hmm. like prophecy, healing, right. faith, miracles, words of wisdom, knowledge, uh, speaking in tongues, interpretation of tongues, tongues, discerning of spirits. Uh, and then number 12, the youth pastor is spiritually healthy. And I want to really dive in on two pieces here that are distinctive. Again, the calling of God on a youth pastor's life and its impact on longevity mm -hmm. and the power of the Holy Spirit in a youth pastor's life, life in uh, relation to longevity. So these are all these statements, all these facts were given and found to be common mm -hmm. amongst youth pastors who've been in Assemblies of God churches five years or more. So if you're in your church five years or less, if you've had several tenures of uh, not a lot of time, Tune in. Pay attention. <laughs> These pieces are important and will help you mm. significantly. Uh, all participants seem to express a calling. Yeah. Almost all, almost all 79 okay. said, I, I have a calling. Only maybe one said that they didn't. However, only 63% of those who've been in their churches five years or more, full-time youth ministry, said that they are called to youth ministry specifically. Interesting. That means more than a third have either a general ministry call mm -hmm. or they have a different call and they're on their way. You've heard this term stepping stone. Mm -hmm. Well, stepping stone isn't always bad because these people who are stepping have been stepping for five years. Yeah. So they've made a long-term commitment mm -hmm. to this step right. in their youth ministry development. More than one thirty would say they're not called specifically to youth ministry. 80% said they have a general call to ministry. So among that, 63 who said, I'm called to youth ministry specifically, 80% um, uh, uh, of those also, or more than 80% of those would say, I have a general call also yeah. uh, to ministry. So the call here is, is highly significant. Um, and when asked to respond to the statement, I'm called to youth ministry for life or the majority of my life, 42% said yes. Interesting. That's very significant hmm. because how many people actually stay in youth ministry for life? For life. Mm -hmm. Very few. And almost none, if they stay in youth ministry for life, 
end their career and retire in youth ministry. Hmm. Almost all move on to something else. Uh, let's take our former youth director as an example. Yeah. He was 58 or 59 when he stepped out of youth ministry into being a world missionary. Right. Now, he is Still called, kind of though, in missions right. to catalyze youth ministry globally. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so he would be one of those rare who, who sticks around and does it. But 42%, 28% were undecided. 30% said, I'm not called to youth ministry. Uh, for life, but I'm called for a season, uh, they would say. Very, very interesting. And so um, when you have a call and it's specific and you believe it's for life or the majority of your life, that, that obviously directs how you how you do it. Yeah. And then youth pastors experience the call of God mm-hmm. to ministry in very different ways. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Um, okay, so we're going to get into a couple uh, quotes. Yeah, so this is youth pastors describing how they experience God's call. Because yeah. you may wonder, like, well, I didn't have, like, uh, uh, an experience like Paul, uh, Saul, on the blinded. road to Damascus, where the Lord blinded me and said, youth ministry. <laughs> uh, but, so let's talk about how some different youth pastors experience the call. All right, so, uh, this youth pastor described his call as a radical altar experience. said, I went to a winter retreat my senior year of high school, God met me there. My youth pastor prayed over me, and I heard a call to ministry being revealed in my life. But the youth pastor told me later he actually prayed something different from what I heard. I wrote, I'm going to be a youth pastor on a page in my journal that weekend. And since then, I have never doubted that was what I was supposed to do. It was a radical calling experience. And I think as a as a vocational youth pastor, I think, Lord... Every time I pray the wrong thing, correct it yes, before it reaches the student's ears. Yes. Yeah. Now, this is wild. Here's another one. Completely different call experience. One participant said this. When I was in high school, there was a girl who wanted to marry a youth pastor. So I said I was going to be a youth pastor. But then, but then God actually did call me to be a youth pastor in prayer. Wow. I've never felt called to be a leaf pastor. I feel called to youth <laughs> ministry and nothing else. So just a wild group of experience. One guy yeah. wrote he was he wanted to be a neurosurgeon. Then he got sick. It derailed his plans. This is a smart guy. Yeah. Then he started volunteering in the youth ministry, discovered he was good at it, realized he had a call. So mm. people experienced the call in very different ways. Wow. And youth pastors spoke about uh, quite a bit about the power of the call. Mm in relation to their youth ministry longevity. One youth pastor said about the call, I think it's the reason we've stayed so long. Mm. Remember, five years or more. Yeah. It was our desire to fulfill the call. Mm. Another said, it keeps me going. It's always been there. When nothing seems to be going right, the call keeps me going. Mm. One described his commitment to the call saying this, until I feel the call is shifted, or lifted. This is like, this is my attitude until God says right. something else. Until I feel the call is shifted or lifted or when I'm not content. Now that wouldn't be, I wouldn't say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm not content a lot, but uh, I'll know the call is done. For me, I won't quit until God says you're done. Yeah. That's me too. That's good. Yeah. Another described her determination by saying, because the call is ongoing, that's what makes me go. God has a task for me, and I have to fulfill it. Another one said, I think it's paramount, the call. I wouldn't be as willing to fight through some of the rough periods and moments without it. Yeah. Wow. One youth pastor stated, it's a reminder. It's why I'm here, especially when things get frustrating or I get beat up. It's an anchor. Another anchor. said, it's the anchor. This is another one said. Yeah, and this is, this is significant. So yeah. these next few statements, like, uh, strangely, because anchor, the word anchor was not in the questions, hmm. but many youth pastors use the word anchor okay. when describing their call. So here we go. Um, another said, it's the anchor. The call is the anchor. Another, there have been a couple times when I daydreamed about doing other things, but when I think about those things, it can't last long. The call is an anchor that keeps me in place. And another, it's definitely a major anchor. When I get frustrated or think about money, it keeps me anchored. It lets me know that I'm walking in God's will. And with enough time, you see the reward of being faithful. So why would you want to walk outside of God's will? Anchor, anchor, anchor. So when you're feeling 
like you're being blown in the wind Mm -hmm. in youth ministry, go back to your call. It anchors you. And I recently said this to you guys. Yeah. um, Because um, you, Maria, Corinne, Joe Kelly, uh, knew me only socially or formally. Oh, yeah. Before you came to work here. I had no idea what he was really like. True story. (laughs) And no one did. They've been shocked (laughs) at how human I am. Uh, But um, we have uh, come, uh, you came Mm mid-COVID and we fought out of it together. So we have uh, done things like started the Spirit Tour, Move Convention, seen our Speed of Light Giving triple yeah. almost this year. Uh, we've seen our campus missionary commitments grow go up. We had the first youth pastor retreat mm-hmm. ever together. So we have fought these battles and fought through vision to land into some significant places and areas. Yep. And when you do that together as a team in your youth ministry or in your staff, it does form then an attachment together, right? right? Yeah. So when I said that I was uh, going to be leaving, there was a lot of emotion. Crying, <laughs> <laughs> Crying emotion, <laughs> and still some emotion, yeah. of course. Uh, and one of the things that I have said to the team is, please rely on your call. Right. Go back to your call, because no one came here because of me. Correct. <laughs> No offense. (laughs) No one came here because nobody said that guy, that's a guy. Right. A person (laughs) that I would, (laughs) he is a guy that I would want to just, I just want to learn from this person. Because some people do, they go to places like you think about the number of people who've gone to learn under ministry gurus, Mm self-appointed ministry gurus, and and they want to learn from this specific personality. You guys came here because God was speaking to you Mm -hmm. about coming here. He called you to come here. All three of you, Joe, Maria, Corinne, Mm -hmm. not for me. Now we're attached now. So there's uh, changes ahead that will be challenging if, yes. if for no other reason than just emotionally just change yeah but you have a call so lean into your call right and and i have I said please stay at the table because mm-hmm. that's where your call has led you to right and, and unless god speaks to you about going somewhere else lean into your call so when things get rough things change things get challenging lean into your call now i want to talk about the holy spirit and so um i would just say that the holy spirit is to me, I think, in terms of longevity, hmm. the most significant factor for an Assembly of God youth pastor. Okay. And it's tied to the call because it is the Holy Spirit who gives us our call, right. who speaks to us about our call. So our call, our vocational or ministry destination, and the Holy Spirit's operation are tied together. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are linked together. Uh, and I would just, I just want to just challenge everyone and say um, that... You cannot overemphasize the role of the Holy Spirit personally in your life Mm -hmm. as a youth pastor. Yeah. And there have been attempts to minimize the role of the Holy Spirit. I think that was one of the great sins of Mm -hmm. the attractional church model, the seeker-friendly model that would say we're going to uh, maybe just limit the expression of the Holy Spirit to small groups Mm -hmm. or to ministries and not into the main service. Well, that you can't really do that without it impacting you personally. And then yeah. you limit the spirit personally because that's you're what your church out. is doing. Yeah. yeah, you're missing out. And uh, one youth pastor said this in relation to speaking in tongues. said, I pray in tongues every day. Me too. Mm-hmm. I know there is a difference when I do that. Yeah. Another said, I pray in the spirit. The spirit helps me do well in ministry, but more generally as a Christian. Yeah. Yeah. That's the way it should be. A third youth pastor said, I try to pray in the spirit every day, especially when we don't know what to pray or what to do. Yes, Mm -hmm. that's why, I mean, that is one of the reasons I pray in the spirit every day. I don't know what to pray or what to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, who can know what to do in this generation without being informed by the Holy Spirit? And he said, the Holy Spirit, or she said, the Holy Spirit helps me to know what to pray Mm -hmm. and what to do. Another youth pastor, oh, sorry. (laughs) My turn. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, one youth pastor said, how do you communicate effectively without the Holy Spirit? How do I effectively communicate the gospel of Jesus through the Old Testament? It has to be the Holy Spirit. 
Another said, the spirit guides me as I pray. I feel called to pray over students or to say a, say or speak a word over students. The Holy Spirit guides me in these moments. Mm. Another said, I don't plan things on a yearly scale. Every Wednesday night, the message is surrendered to God. If God leads in a different direction, that's the direction we go in. And I just want to say, like this guy says, I don't plan things out on a yearly scale or girl. Every Wednesday night, the message is surrendered to God. If God leads in a different I don't recommend that. <laughs> God and the Holy Spirit can speak to you as you plan out a year yes, ahead. Yes, yes. So this, there is an idea that, oh, if we're going to be spirit-led, we can't plan. It has to be all that spontaneous. Is, that, how, how, think about how limiting that is to what the Holy Spirit can do. or right. speak. He can speak to you for something five years from now. Mm -hmm. um, I had just had a miracle happen in my life that God had been speaking to me to do something challenging, and I did it uh, and finished it, and it cost a lot of money. And then it was like a miracle happened, and it justified mm -hmm. what I heard from God 10 years ago. Wow. Yeah, and I was just walking in blind faith for 10 years. Mm -hmm. So the Holy Spirit can speak to you a year in advance. So this person is saying the Holy Spirit guides every Wednesday. Well, I would hope that. Yeah. But you, that doesn't mean you don't have to plan right. <laughs> on a yearly basis. The Holy Spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit yeah, can speak to you through yeah. your planning. Yeah. I hope the Holy Spirit's informing your values, which would inform your speaking, you know, mm -hmm. all that. So another one says, the Holy Spirit has told me, this is powerful. Uh, this youth pastor talked about how the Holy Spirit informs her life mm. and how she carries herself. So the Holy Spirit has told me I'm not supposed to look like anything. I'm not, su I'm supposed to, I'm just supposed to love kids to be a part of their lives. And I don't look like the typical youth pastor. I care a lot. I want to be a part of their daily lives. I want to build relations with them in an intimate way. The Holy Spirit has led me to do that. I'm not trying to look mm -hmm. like anyone else. Think about how that would free you from insecurity of feeling like that playing the comparison game, mm -hmm. the power of the Holy Spirit in your yeah. life. Wow. Another said, I don't understand how anyone can survive without the Holy Spirit on the day to day. I think the baptism of the Holy Spirit gives me peace on a daily basis, from small decisions to big decisions, from conversations with students to planning events. Without the presence of the Holy Spirit, I could not function, especially as a young youth pastor. Mm. I mean, how do you deal with students trying to navigate our world today without the Holy Spirit? And that's what I say yeah. <laughs> all the time. Yeah. All the time. Another youth pastor said the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit informs what I do. The Holy Spirit guides me, especially with preaching. The Holy Spirit guides mm. me, especially when preaching to groups outside of my comfort zone. Amen mm. and amen. Yeah. Uh, so, so good. Wow. Uh, youth pastors described their reliance on the Holy Spirit with very strong terms. Mm. Emphasis on very. Yeah. Um, one said simply, it's everything. Another said, I can't imagine doing ministry without the Holy Spirit. Another said, all Total. I need the Holy Spirit. I value the Holy Spirit. I know what I am without the Holy Spirit, and it's better with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> yes. In my own strength, things are more stressful. Another said, the Holy Spirit plays a vital role. The Holy Spirit plays a vital role. People who don't rely on the Holy Spirit to do ministry, that is probably a lot tougher. And another reflected, I can't imagine doing life without the Holy Spirit. Yeah, and several youth pastors yeah. use the word guide mm. when discussing describing the Holy Spirit. One said, I try to allow the Holy Spirit to guide everything I do. It's completely integral in every part. Another said, I'm not really sure how to answer the question. The Holy Spirit is just the guide to everything I do. Yeah, you wouldn't know how to answer it if it was the guide to everything because it's just, it's, yeah. it's everything. That's my life. Yeah, mm -hmm. whether I listen or not, the Holy Spirit is the guide. <laughs> this is true in my personal life as well as in ministry. Another said, the Holy Spirit is the guiding force. Every day, the Holy Spirit gives direction, power, wisdom. Another said, the Holy Spirit guides me and the decision-making process. I try to be spirit-led. I sense the Lord's presence with me daily. I sense the Lord's presence. One youth pastor reflected, hopefully, the Holy Spirit leads me every day. I fully believe in the power and person of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. as an individual. I need to lean on that power. I lean on that power to empower me to see mm -hmm. things through because I can't do it on my own. Wow. Um, many youth pastors describe the Holy Spirit as a source for longevity in youth ministry. Um, specifically, one said, the Holy Spirit gives constant validation that you are in the right call. I'm happy in what I do. I have contentment in the calling, but sometimes with teenagers, it can be dismal and hopeless. It is the Holy Spirit that brings hope. Mm, it's really yeah. good. Another said, without the Holy Spirit's help, I wouldn't have lasted more than a few months. 
You can't do this without the Holy Spirit, and I wouldn't want to. <laughs> Another, the Holy Spirit's guidance every day in this place where I am that keeps me here. Um, and then another reflected, this is the last one, it tied, it's tied very closely with the calling. The Spirit is the reminder of the calling. The Spirit is like the highlighter over the things I'm supposed to be doing. I look at the voice of the Spirit as a reminder of why I'm doing what I'm doing. It's really good. I and like that highlighter yeah. illustration. Highlighter. Uh, and before we, uh, before you check out these last uh, statements on the Holy Spirit, I would just personally reflect that um, 12 years I was in the local church, four and a half years in Philadelphia, mm -hmm. and seven and a half years in uh, Carlisle. And both uh, seasons had great uh, victories and great defeats mm -hmm. and challenges. Uh, and both were... Um, had periods of difficulty in terms of should I be here or stay here or not. In Philadelphia, I feel like I can talk a little freely about this. The pastor and his family have passed, uh, his wife have passed, and they were mentors to me in those early years in ministry, especially what it meant to be mm -hmm. Pentecostal and spirit-empowered. But there were also um, very challenging uh, times. Uh, I was told, for example, that the food bank was part of my salary and that I should take from there to supplement mm. our grocery bill so we could afford to live wow. in the city. Yeah. And, and there were other just uh, things that were challenging um, that I, I don't want to get too much into. But, you know, in Carlisle, too, there were things that were very challenging. And in Carlisle, we were seeing really great successes with Bible clubs and student giving. And I started to feel a sense of accomplishment. Mm. Because we were seeing things happen that yeah. you want to see happen. Mm. Um, student leadership, student uh, participation, internship programs. And I start to think, well, maybe like, maybe I'll just go find another job because it's frustrating here and and I'm, I'm challenged. Mm. And I was there seven and a half years and probably at least once a year in the last four years, so more than half my tenure, I would go on the youth specialties at the time job board. Mm. And at one point, I think the assemblies had a job board. And I even thought about putting a resume in, and I might even gotten a resume ready for a, a, a different denomination in town that was mm. hiring because we could stay where we are and, and um, just frustrated. But at the end of the day, I never put a resume in anywhere else until God called me mm. to, unless I felt God was saying it. And right. until he, I felt like he called me to do it. Uh, because at the end of the day, you have to say, Holy Spirit, uh, God, what are you calling me to do? Mm. And if the answer to that question is stay, or the answer is not evidently go, right. then you have to figure out how to stay mm. in the frustrating right. moments and times. How do I... God, help me figure out how I can stay here mm -hmm. and somehow get healthy, even though I'm not in a healthy situation. Right. Help me figure out how to be here. And this is where the call and the Holy Spirit really comes into play. Every time I speak with a youth pastor who's frustrated about their situation, I listen to them talk. Mm -hmm. I hear what they have to say. And then I ask them one defining question. What is God speaking to you? Because all feeling aside, mm -hmm. this is the biggest thing. Right. What is the Holy Spirit saying to you? Because if he's saying to you stay, then you gotta you gotta take your feelings and you gotta sort them out mm -hmm. and you gotta figure out how to stay. Right. So here's what a couple. Let's go ahead and through a couple of things that youth pastor said about that. Okay. God made it plain through the Holy Spirit when we wanted to leave. The Holy Spirit said to stay. Learning and being willing to listen to that even when you don't want to hear it, accepting God's grace during that season. It all came from the Holy Spirit. And another youth pastor said, in times when I want to quit, but even in the little moments, the Holy Spirit reinforces, this is what I'm asking you to do. Even when things are clunky or hard, sometimes I don't feel like I'm the right person for the job, but the Holy Spirit has told me I am not called to be like anyone else. I'm just called to be me. Yeah, it's good. Mm. Really good. So that's it. That's all we got today. We That's have some it. birthdays to get to, wow. but let me just challenge everyone. In my final times, uh, time on this uh, Monday Motivation, lean into the Holy Spirit, mm. not away from yeah. the Holy Spirit. Embrace the Holy Spirit in a fuller way in your life. Speak in tongues every day. Every time that 
you don't know what to say or pray or do, let it become, let pray in the tongues so much that it's instinctual, that you don't have to think about it. You just mm-hmm. start doing it when you're in a challenge situation. Yeah. Uh, if you're like me, you have an Apple Watch, and every now and then it tries to lure you into Zen practices <laughs> and once a day. <laughs> take a moment and breathe in, breathe out. I take that moment as a reminder, speak in tongues. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's how I, <laughs> nice try, Steve Jobs and Apple. <laughs> No way. I'm going to pray in tongues instead. <laughs> Not today. Not today. Satan, apple, Satan, man. <laughs> yeah, Satan used an apple there in the garden. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. It was a fruit. But um, lean into the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Lean into your call. Yeah. Let it be your anchor. Let it be your guide. Uh, let it do all those things. Uh, we do want to say happy birthday this week to Jessica Hunt Hines up in the northwest section on Thursday. Happy birthday. And Kimmy Kelly. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Two Thursday birthdays. Yes, and congratulations, Kimmy and Jake. You are expecting uh, um, a mouse, I think. A mouse? Mickey Mouse, because they announced at Disney. (laughs) They're expecting a baby. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's big congratulations. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so we're so thrilled and excited for you. Well, uh, Corinne, uh, why don't you pray for our youth pastors? All right. Well, guys, this is your last one with him on here. (laughs) <laughs> so, Lord, we just thank you for um, for Pastor Lee and all of the research that he has done and put his time in to um, to talk and have conversations and learn um, about the the tendencies and the needs and the uh, all the different things for longevity in youth ministry, especially uh, in the Assemblies of God. Lord, we thank you for that research that we can learn from and we can grow from. And um, Lord, we we just pray a blessing over every youth pastor and leader listening today. God, would you bless them? Would you encourage them? Would you lift them uh, and their spirit, Lord, uh, closer to you? Holy Spirit, we just pray that they would lean on you. Um, We thank you that we have this crazy um, availability to talk with you, Holy Spirit. And so we uh, we thank you for that, and we lean on your guidance, and we thank you for giving us a call. Lord, um, we just pray that you would continue to go before us and lead us and guide us. We know that you always will. We bless you, and we thank you in your name. Amen. 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 Signing off. Happy Monday. Happy Monday.